Hello there ladies and gentlemen, Pork Chopper here and today is the day we have all been waiting for for a few weeks now is the version 42.3 patch notes, the first big patch since version 42 had dropped. In this video we're going to go over the major hero and card changes but this patch contains much more than that talking about the UI changes, the deck building changes and some bot changes as well. Even though they're not that significant you definitely should take out a full patch note if you want to get all the full information but that would take a really long time to go through. So in this video like I said I'm going to go over the major hero and card changes and but not just talk about them because what's the point of that I'm going to be actually given my opinion if I think this is a good bad and the right way going forward for Paragon in the future. But let's jump right into the hero changes first. So the first hero change is probably the one most people are excited for being Wukong. What they have changed about him is his overall stats for pretty much everything, mainly focusing on his health, basic defense and basic attack speed. So what they've generally done to Wukong is reduce most of his base stats, mainly focusing on health, basic armor and basic attack speed. Even though with each stat they haven't nerfed it significantly, if you nerf loads of stats overall that is going to be a big change to the hero. So they have slightly nerfed a lot of small stats, but overall that could be a big change. And they've also nerfed two of these abilities, Cloudwalker which is the one that made him able to fly up into the air pretty much or slam down and do damage and slow an enemy. The cooldown has been increased on that slightly and control aggression is the other being his passive. The gold banter you get on thrower is pretty much halved now because before it gave him too much gold. Overall I think this is the great change we really wanted for Wukong. The Gauld Bounty was something that made it so he even though he could farm well and he could put pressure on the map and escape well, he could just do everything too quickly. That means now even if he farms well he won't be getting as much gold and his escapability and survivability is definitely going to be hit by this change. So that hopefully means that if you do lock down a Wukong you can kill him a lot quicker and not have to worry about him as much as you do now because right now it's pretty much a 4v1. The next change is going to be with Iggy with his base health, health per level, base health regen and a health regen per level all being slightly nerfed and tweaked, nothing significant there but Blaze being his ultimate, the damage per a tick has been slightly reduced and so has the power scaling. That may not seem much but remember this is damage per a tick and over say the ultimate it does 20 ticks of damage that is going to add up to a little bit less damage than you were doing before with Iggy's turrets. Then we have Kalari with Shadow Dance, the cooldown of that has been increased by quite a bit, almost twice at the later levels. If you don't know, Shadow Dance was the ability where she got health regen while in the shadow plane and also her jump, so it means she won't be as agile as much as possible. And the other ability that has been slightly nerfed is Shadow Walk, the one that made her go into the shadow plane. The mana cost is only increased from 50 to 60. Except for that the overall basic stats have been slightly reduced, this time more focusing on basic attacks and attack speed as that scaling was a teeny bit too good on her and again you may think well there's still going to be really good cards for her, wait till the card nerfs before you do that judges because overall I think this is going to be some great nerfs for Kalari, just what she needs without going too overbought. Then for Quan we have Light of the Heavens which is the ability where he does small AoE damage and gives him armor for a few seconds. The ability armor and the basic armor has been reduced across the board especially early game it has been halved on level 1 which I definitely think was needed as Quan early game with the right card combinations was pretty much unkillable and then from out Quan could just dominate the game. But overall I'm quite happy with those overall changes to Quan. It may not be that much but again wait till the card changes to see if it really Really would impact him or not. And now we're going to go on to the buffs. Skidding over with Cosmic Rift, Burden and Black Hole have generally got increased power scaling. Now most of this makes sense but I don't understand why Cosmic Rift, which is his rock, has increased power scaling. It would already hit like an absolute truck. So from going from 3 to 3.5 power scaling? That's going to hurt a lot. I don't understand that change, but the other two make much sense as Gideon definitely was a little bit underperforming, but he definitely is going to be one hell of a force to be reckoned with now. Now, Rape's buff is a bit of an odd one to me, 
basically it just increases his base health and health per level and his health regen. Nothing there yeah, substantial, I was expecting more scaling like with Gideon, better scaling and maybe reduce the cooldowns of some of his abilities. So I'm not really sure how that's going to work with Wraith but we're going to really have to wait to find out there. I'm a bit confused about that one. And then we have Synx with Clitty Claws, which is her toggle basic attack, which makes her deal damage over time. The mana cost for this has pretty much been halved at all levels, and the power scaling has been quite increased from 0.21 to 0.75. And the base damage has actually been decreased a little bit to compensate from the extra power scaling. This is going to be really, really good, as before it cost way too much mana, so the mana has been halved, and with the power scaling, it's definitely going to be dealing more damage as well, and that's definitely a nice buff for Zinx. And now about does it ladies and gentlemen for all the hero changes. What I have decided to do is do two separate videos, one talking about the hero changes and then one talking about the card changes because if I combo two of them together it would have been a really really long video. So if you're seeing this video in a few hours of this being uploaded I will have all my discussion talk on the card changes out there so do subscribe and stick around the channel for that. But my overall opinion about the hero changes is I definitely agree with all of them. You're nerfing the heroes that need to be nerfed and buffing the heroes that sort of need to be buffed. But of course we're more focusing on the nerfs because there's definitely some heroes which are really overperforming with certain combinations of cards. That again in my next video I will be talking about the problems with those cards and how Epic are addressing them. But I'm really happy with these hero changes, it's a really good looking forward for Paragon's future. I cannot wait to jump in on this update this Tuesday and really see how these changes come about. It's been really nice to not go up against like an OP Kalaria Wukon, so that's going to be nice. But thank you all very much for this video. Like I said, stick around in a few hours for my car discussion video, and I'll see you all next time.